Now, of course, the passenger side is different than the driver's side. Same tweeter, different mount, but it still has those same two guides that are on there. One thing I didn't talk about on the previous tweeter was removing the mesh grill here. If I can remove the mesh grill, I like to do it because the more stuff that is put in front of the tweeter, the less sounds you're gonna get from it. If I can do the install without it and not worry about people touching it, I'm going to do that. There's a grill here, which will keep people from doing this. So that means there's no need to have this on there. With a little bit more effort in getting the teeth that hold the tweeter in place up, and, and allow the tweeter to slide in underneath them. This tweeter locked into place, just like on the other side. We dressed up the wire, it's all fit and ready to go. Now we have both of the tweeters all set and ready. Cool. To prep the bracket in the door, the first thing we need to do is see if we need to remove these downsizing tabs by putting the speaker in and it does, it hits. These are designed to just break out like that. Test fit the speaker again, slides right in, fits very nicely. We like to put foam on both the front and back of the speaker. We're gonna use a quarter inch, 16th inch thick foam for the back side. And then we'll use half inch, 16th inch foam for the front side. The foam does a couple things. For one, it prevents the speaker from rattling against the plastic. And two, this has all these little holes in it all over the place. And if you're not using those, depending on the speaker, it might blow air through those and you'll get a whistling sound. Terrible. And that is that. Now looking at the factory bracket, it goes like this. So this does not come in with a hole. So we will drill a hole here in the top and then it'll look like this once it gets the doors. I'm gonna wait and let Fernando screw it in. I'll get these over to him so that he can get them into the car. We need to get to the radio brain. That's right, the brain. Because the radios are now multi-piece. And what I mean is, this is not the radio. This is just a touch screen that interacts with the radio. The radio is buried somewhere in this area here, which does beg the question, how do we get to it? Some vehicles, it's simple. Like the Bronco, you just remove this piece here. The harnesses are right there, it's super cool. This one, it's a little bit harder. It's a lot harder to remove this. You have to remove this. We have to remove this We've already taken out the glove box. It drops down There's two clips here and here that push in while you take that out. There's about 10 million clips on this Let's get started now I've already loosened it up because there are a ton of clips that this has the first thing that has to come off is this piece here a lot of clips. I mean, just a bunch. I would recommend ordering some of these little white clips that were the same ones that were on the door panel if you're gonna be doing this install because they go flying and you're gonna need some. Next piece to come off is the bottom piece here next to your passenger side of the dash. It's this little guy right here. Here again, like six clips holding this on. Then on the driver's side of the dash, it is the same. You do need to pull down the fuse panel to get it off and then that will unsnap same six clips. Then this piece will come off. You see the white clips went flying. And there is a ton of clips all along here to hold that. Let me go set this on the shelf. I almost forgot this piece here on the driver's side also needs to come off in order to get this bottom trim off. But that does expose this area here, which is what we are looking for. Seven millimeter screws all the way around. Two more here at the top. What you have to look for is layers, meaning what sits on top of what. That's the key. There's some resistance here in the center. There's another clip. So the six screws weren't enough. They actually put a clip in the back here. That gets us our cigarette lighter out of the way. Two more screws located behind the cigarette lighter. Now, I'll take and get out of now at this point, it looks like an F-150. It has the same two F-150 plugs on it. It's just a lot harder to get to it. This is our front control panel. This is a bad design on Ford's part for sure. There's a way too much that you have to take off to get to this piece. This right here is our radio. Pull it out. Now if you do want to put a new radio in the dash for this, you can. 
This would just take an MFT1 kit. There we go. There's a radio. It uses the old plugs. It doesn't use the new ones. The new ones are square. The old ones are longer. That means I got the wrong harness. I'll have to go get the right one. From the looks of it, you could fit a short chassis double din up here or a floating screen. If you wanted to do a floating screen radio, probably use the Alpine or the Sony to go in there. You might even be able to do the Kenwood. There's a lot of room behind this, for sure. We got this out. I'm gonna go grab the right T-harness. I'll meet you on the bench and I'll tell you about the T-harness we're gonna use to integrate into this. This is the LPH FD21. It is designed to plug into the factory radio here and then the factory harness will plug into it here. And then it comes with all these cool harnesses to allow us to do what we need to do. In this case, we will be adding high zamp for the front and a subwoofer. The rear is just going to get powered off the radio. So the green and purple will get plugged back together. Then we have these two harnesses here, which have the white and gray. On them they say front signal to amplifier. This will be our high level output from the radio that's gonna go to the input of the amplifier. Then we have this one here that says front signal from amp. This will go off to the two mid base and the door and power those up. The rest of the harnesses are for the rear is the same thing. And then you have the sub harness, which is a T harness. This is if you're just gonna be adding a subwoofer, you can plug it into either the front or rear, preferably the front, and it'll give us a left and right positive and negative output without interrupting the sound going off to those speakers. So it just goes between these here. We're not gonna be using this. The last harness is this one here. This is a power harness. This car uses a smart accessory, meaning it's done through data bus. So even though this harness has a yellow, red, black, really the only thing it offers is constant 12 volts and ground. As you can see on this end, where it just has a yellow, which is the constant 12 volts and the black, which is ground. So if I needed that I could use this harness which I don't this will be all I'll need we are gonna be using a set of the AC LGD 20s just for the front so this here will come out of the two amplifier side and attach here and then go off to that now for those of you that don't know what these are these are load resistors and what they're designed to do is give the amplifier that's in the radio a load so that it thinks there's a speaker connected to it and it doesn't go into protection shut off also if it's a class d amplifier it'll, it'll help to stabilize the amplifier so that it won't go off the rails and produce bad sound usually in the high frequency range like it'll blow tweeters one thing I like to do is pretty up the harness, make it look more factory. To do that, I will remove the sticky black tape they're using here. I don't recommend going all the way up to top here. I like to leave anywhere between inch to two inch. That way it, it has flexibility, just like that. So it still has plenty of movement. The speakers I like to do separately. That way if we ever go in and change anything, it's easy enough to do. And that's it, that's how I prep it. 